Welcome to American Focus. I'm Dan McCaleb, Executive Editor of the Center Square Newswire Service. Joining me today is Casey Harper, the Center Square's Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief. Let's get into it, Casey. Over the past week, U.S. taxpayers, the federal government, investors in certain banks have been paying close attention to these recent um, bank failures. The federal government is going to bail out folks who have money in these banks that recently have failed. But coinciding with that, is how that's going to impact the Fed's attempt to battle inflation. The Fed, of course, over the past year has been, been raising interest rates, and there's concerns that that, that those two might collide and um, impact inflation going forward. You've written about this a couple of times this week. Tell us about it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this is a really interesting issue. It's really troubling, and I like writing about it because it's honestly very confusing. I mean, who really understands how bailing out a bank works? Especially when the, the White House is telling you, no, we're not really doing it like, you know, the bad way. We're just trying to help out people. And I mean, when it's an issue is this complicated, you, it's hard to really question the narrative that the party in charge tells you. And so I wanted to dig into that a little bit and uh, also see how this impacts, you know, inflation for the next six months to a year down the road. And it turns out it does have a big impact. So the first side of this is Biden in his speech. He emphasized multiple times that taxpayers are not going to be on the hook for these bailouts. He said, I'll read this quote. This is an important point. No losses will be borne by the taxpayer. Let me repeat that. No losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Instead, the money will come from the fees that banks pay into the deposit insurance fund. So you kind of really clearly, I mean, he repeated it multiple times. You get the uh, the thing they're afraid of is, you know, the in very recent memory, the 2008 financial crisis bank bailouts, which were a political catastrophe, right? The bonuses. I mean, that was a really big story. People were really upset about all the, the billions of dollars that these banks got. And taxpayer money. Right. And they caused this giant recession and then they got all this money and really nobody paid any consequences for it. It was really unpopular. So I think Biden's trying to avoid that now, but is it true? So I talked to one expert, EJ Antony. Um, he's a economist at the Heritage Foundation. And he pointed out that that fund they're talking about doesn't have near enough liquidity to actually cover just the people who have their money in the bank, not let alone like investors. And so he's saying like that is that is why they had to announce an emergency lending fund to meet the demand for the liquidity, right? So that if that fund was enough, why is there another fund, which is a good point. And he just said, this is a really interesting quote. He said, there's no way around the reality that taxpayers are on the hook here. So he's essentially saying that taxpayers are on the hook. Yeah, it might not be as directly as you might think, but he kind of explains it here. So he says, when the FDIC runs out of cash, it goes to the treasury for more, which is what we saw in the last financial crisis. And there's three ways to fund that. Um, the FDIC can increase its insurance premiums charged to banks. But if they do that, that's just going to get passed on to consumers, right? So it's kind of an indirect tax. Okay. So second way is for the treasury just to give the money, which of course the taxpayer is directly you know, paying if they just hand the money over. And the last is the, fi- the Federal Reserve can just print more money. I think everyone knows at this point, printing more money directly causes inflation and that's a hidden tax on people. So, you know, the White House can say it's not a tax and technically it's not. But if they print a bunch of money, then um, we're going to see much more inflation, which means when people go to the grocery store, uh, all their food's going to be more expensive, which maybe technically isn't a tax. But uh, And consumers have been feeling that over the past year and a half. Of course, the, the Fed printing more money it helped drive the 40-year high inflation that we saw uh, last year, now inflation has s- slowed um, somewhat, but prices are still significantly higher than they were just two years ago. So what you're saying is it's possible, depending on what the Fed does with interest rates, is inflation could continue to increase. Right. And I just want to point at this point because both parties have really done this, but they they have these giant bills and they emphasize, like Biden did, that no one making less than $400,000 is going to pay for this. So don't worry about it. If you're making less than 400,000, you're not going to be, you're not going to pay. Or as he said recently, the taxpayer will not bear the, you know, it, the cost will not be borne by the taxpayer. But I think everyone knows in the last two years, because of how high inflation went directly in large part, not entirely, but in large part because of these giant federal COVID relief bills, people making less than $400,000 definitely did bear the cost of it one way or another. So just because they don't tax you, if they do print all the money to pay for it, you're still going to end up paying for it in the long run. And so I think this is something we've tried to highlight at the centersquare.com that is the taxpayer perspective. This is like a, a loophole. They can print the money and say they're not taxing anyone, but ultimately regular people are going to pay the cost. And as you alluded to, this does have a big impact on the Federal Reserve, right? Because the Federal Reserve has a big decision to make later this month. They have to decide if they're going to raise interest rates. Now, of course, as we've said, the Federal Reserve raising interest rates is, you know, they see that as one of their big tools to fight inflation. 
They've been aggressively raising rates and inflation has um, begun to level off in recent months. But now that this bank coll- have, the banks have collapsed, they may not be able to raise those rates anymore. You know, there's debate over this. You ask 10 different people, you'll get different answers, different economists, you get different answers. But raising these rates is hard on the economies. It, it hard on the economy it can be hard on banks and definitely hard on the markets. And so if they do raise it again, they are going to be taking a big risk with these banks and with the markets, which are a lot more sensitive right now. But if they stop raising it by the Fed's own logic, inflation will go up. So they have this really difficult choice. And as one expert put it, and I put it in the headline, it's no painless option. So these bank collapses have really had a big impact. And I think it's going to have impact for several months to come. One way or another, American taxpayers, American consumers are going to get hit by this. Uh, You said the Fed meets later this month. I think it's March 22nd. So we'll find out then if they're going to raise interest rates again, if it's going to be another big increase. They raised interest rates seven times in 2020. To alone after going years of stagnant uh, interest rates. So we'll, we'll see then. We'll look forward to your reporting, which you can read at thecentersquare.com. Casey, that's all the time we have this week. For our listeners, please subscribe and thank you for listening.